when you're living on an island and your family does that, I mean, your whole, the whole dynamics of, of growing up changes you. It's an utterly different childhood. Mother used to say, why don't you bring some of my friends down, come down for a weekend and have a house party, and, which is a wonderful idea, but I, I would think, who wants to come down to an island? I wanted to go to the drugstore and drink Cokes. And, you know, enough, who would want to do that? And, but of course, I did do that. And, uh, and the one friend I still have living who's, uh, who remembers her visits down to Cabbage Key is she never stops talking about how she was on an aqua plane, you know, like a, like a skis, water skis, and she saw a big turtle come up in, in the water and how frightened she was. And, and she also kept talking about what a what wonderful soup our mother made. Uh, my name's Deborah Harvey. My maiden name was Stultz. Um, I was born in Illinois, but my family moved to Sarasota to Longboat Key in 1943. Uh, while my dad recuperated from an illness, and we lived on the water on the Gulf, and uh, I was 14 when we moved here. And we moved to Cabbage Key in 1944, after my parents saw the island on a fishing trip. As a teenager, I think I just saw them. It was my mother and father. Um, I think they were very ambitious and somewhat out of their minds to think they could move to an island with three children and... Um, and somehow have us all go to school and survive and uh, do well. They knew nothing about island living. They had been suburbanites in Chicago, so I would I, I would call them adventurers and trailblazers in a sense because this um, there had never been an in or studio down there. It had been a private island, and and this was a new adventure. So I would say that they were um, an adventurous couple. So mother and dad went out during that time on a uh, boat to go fishing and uh, went down to Charlotte Harbor, Pine Island Sound, and uh, saw Cabbage Key, which had by that time been vacant for about five years and uh, was for sale. I don't know whether it was my father being an artist or whether it was just a whimsical idea why they thought might, this might be a great idea to buy this island and they could have an inn and they could, uh, and dad could teach painting to guests who came, so they developed this idea and bought the island, which at that time was purchased. I think the, I think the asking price was $45,000, and they bought it for 25000 which in today's world is just unbelievable. I have two brothers, Peter um, and uh, Taylor, who was the younger one. And we, bought, we all went to school in Sarasota for that first year. So when they purchased the island, there was a problem because there, there in Boca Grande was the only school we could go to, uh, or I could only go to as a, as a high school student. And so it developed that I stayed with uh, families in Sarasota and, and continued, uh, finished high school here. And eventually, um, my brothers did the same thing. The first thing I think about is that we were groundskeepers, my brothers and I, and we would have to be go outside, pull sand spurs, and, mm -hmm. and do that sort of thing, try to help maintain the island. The boys, I think, were more busy on boats. I think I helped my mother in the kitchen, but we didn't have uh, guests very much in the summer. We had um, tarpon fishermen in June sometimes, but uh, I think I helped as best I, I could there as a teenager. I, I don't think I was expected to take a big role uh, but um, I think I tried my best. The island was an interesting place because um, 80 acres uh, approximately, and um, we thought it was a little more than that. We had a jungle path. Uh, we had a uh, water tower, which stands still also, uh, which is you go up, up in the water tower to see the view. Um, we had some skiffs, some boat, small boats we could take out and uh, go around the island. We remember the fisher people, the fishermen, with great affection because we arrived, and here's this family from the suburbs of Chicago. Uh, I had gone to dancing school. Um, I'd been down to see the ballet in Chicago. We lived an utterly different life. And uh, they sort of must have watched us arrive, and they didn't really jump in and say, how can we help you? They sort of sat back and watched us um, get acclimated and learn what to do. I remember so well one time coming up to the fish house in our boat. We had been to Boca Grande to get groceries, 
And as you probably undoubtedly know, you can't just put on the brakes. So my father put the boat into reverse too late. And the boat kept, he, he wanted to stop. And the boat kept going forward, but he'd already thrown the rope over the piling. So he went forward and the piling, <laughs> pulled the piling down. And all of these fishermen had to have been just laughing and chuckling about the, all the faulty things that they did. But, but in fact, you know, they were more than generous with their help and, and, and care. They, uh, they re I think they must have had a certain amount of affection for these crazy people who came down and bought this island. Well, we came back as much as we could always you know, to visit family so that we, we, we made every effort we could when we were here. We would do that and come down. I have four children and uh, this was a place they really wanted to come to and we have two who live here now. So um, uh, no question about coming, coming down, both to the island mm -hmm. and my, we were living in Japan at the time that mother and dad sold the island and our children were, they felt so helpless, they were really upset because they, their grandparents were selling the island and they weren't there to halt the sale. <laughs> no, so that was tough, they hated to have that happen. But, uh, they came here when they, whenever they could, whenever we could bring them. Uh, but the current owner who came in and really took it over um, has just done a, a marvelous job, except that it's not a home anymore. But it seems to me that there are there is less fish. Nellie, who worked for mother and dad, she could put down a net and bring up all sorts of fish, mm -hmm. and you just don't see that kind of sea life. And we used to have an oyster bar. There's, you know, you wouldn't even dream of eating oysters. So that's what happened to Cabbage Key, and it's still a very unique place.